Hello everyone. Um, now, if you've seen the first part of um, uh, on the uh, blood spatter evidence and the owl theory in the Kathleen Peterson case, you'll know that what I'm trying to explain is why the area directly below where was why is this area almost totally free of blood? Well, that's the area you expect the greatest amount of blood. Um, it's an anomaly, it's hard to explain, I think um, it's difficult for uh, the uh, theory that Michael committed the murder, um, <clears throat> but not impossible, of course you might want to say that uh, Michael cleaned up this area, um, or perhaps he moved the body, uh, made it look as though it was a fall down the stairs when in fact her body was lying somewhere else, something along those lines. Um, but even if you uh, think that something like this is the case, uh, this still seems to be a pretty clear shadow where, um, or a lack of blood, where we would expect, in fact, to find quite a bit, given just the sheer extent of the blood surrounding the area. Um, so any good theory of what happened to Kathleen Peterson, I think, needs to explain this lack of blood in this area. I think it's completely inconsistent with the theory that she fell down the stairs, and I think it's actually best explained on the owl theory, so that's what I'm going to look at again in this video. So, as I said in the last video, I think we can, on the owl theory, presume that what's happening here is this is the shadow of a wing, and the reason I think that is twofold. Firstly, um, it's actually a reasonably uh, good approximate shape <coughs> for a wing. And the other reason that I think this is a good hypothesis is that uh, a wing is just the sort of thing that could, um, in theory, be thin enough to lie between Kathleen's head and the last step. Um, so I think this could explain the shadow rather well. So in the last video, um, I looked at the idea that uh, if this is a wing, we actually get a prediction, and the prediction is that right up against the skirting board, there we should expect to find some sort of impression uh, of part of an owl, and probably the back of an owl, because that would be, uh, on this theory, and given the shape of the wing, probably where we'd expect to find the back of the owl pushed up. So, um, when we zoom in, we can't really see too much that would help us, especially not from this angle. But in the last video, what I did is flipped this image on its side this way up and gave it a little stretch so that we could better see what's going on on the skirting board itself. And I thought that from this view, we could see something rather interesting, uh, something that in fact does seem relatively uh, birdy or the back of a bird. Um, and I thought we might be able to fill in uh, the blood spatter uh, approximately to form an impression something like that. But I also said in the last video uh, that this isn't necessarily the only way we could view uh, the impression of the owl's back because this might not be the way up that the owl is. Um, it could be that I've got things upside down. So in this video I'm going to look at um, <clears throat> how things look if we flip this image uh, on its side. So, let's have a look. So, instead we'll rotate things 180 in the other direction, and we'll have a look at what comes out when we then stretch that section. So, this time I've only stretched this skirting board area, and I've left this area uh, in its original uh, size. So here, this is the skirting board stretched out this way, and I think already we can see something interesting again, and the reason I say that is that now we seem to have what look like the uh, feather shapes overlapping, going in more or less the right direction, in other words pointing down. Whereas before, I, if these were feathers or something along those lines, we'd be uh, looking at feathers rising up into the air, which wouldn't make really a lot of sense if this was the back of an owl. 
<clears throat> now, we still see the same sort of uh, watermelony shape in this region. And the best that I've been able to do is to fill it in like so. So, what we have here seems to be at least part, I think, of the back of an owl, if not perhaps the owl's right wing rising up. But we'll talk about more specifically how I think the placement is working in a moment. Now, if we um, look up towards the what would be the top of the owl, in other words, the owl's head, uh, you'll see that what I, in the previous video, said was this trident-shaped mark that might make us think uh, this is where the owl's talons came to lie. I actually think we might have something else going on here. So it's this part here um, that I think we can explain in another way. Um, I think what we have here, in fact, is the gap between the shoulder blades of an owl. So this is quite speculative, I'll admit, but I think it matches up quite well. If we see the two uh, shoulder sections rising up here, on each side creating um, a symmetrical line that runs actually from around about here up towards what would be the owl's head in this region here. Um, and that would mean that the line of symmetry along the owl's back would in fact run something like this along the very bottom of the uh, skirting board. And that would place this more or less as the bird's shoulder, and this as the top or the first part of the top wing rising up and presumably over Kathleen's head here. So that's sort of what I'm seeing. Down below, we have what seems to be the um, impression of what could be a tail section running along here, but I'm not wedded to that theory. Now, the other reason that we might want to see things this way up is that you'll notice that in the corners of the staircase here, this is also relatively free of blood, whereas down in this section here, it's very rich with blood, which would indicate that, if you like, all the action that's going on in uh, the wounding of Kathleen Peterson is actually happening closer to this region because this seems to be filled with blood. The blood seems to have, in fact, poured out into this region. And in fact, we get almost nothing up here. So I think this is also a reason that we might want to think that if this is um, the impression of the back of an owl, that its talons would be coming out from the bottom here and doing some sort of damage in this region with the blood flow coming out this way. Um, so that's what I'm thinking. Now the region between the owl's shoulders that I'm trying to get at there would be something like that, the indentation that's caused when an owl arches its wings. Right, so we can see that in here. And I think that's what we're seeing there. So that might help to visualize what I think is going on exactly. Right, so moving along, if we put these two parts together, um, what we now see is that if we have a wing going this way, along here, we have the back of the owl up against here, with the head in this region here, and perhaps even this is something to do with it, possibly. Perhaps um, uh, the top feather on the owl's head may be making an impression along here, but again, very speculative. Um, and what this would mean is that the body of the owl is more focused in this region, and the wing is in fact the further extent coming out here. Um, as you can see, lots of blood in this region, very little blood over here by comparison. Now, there is some interesting uh, blood spatter going on actually 
right down in the corner here. So as I said, this is the region where there seems to be the most action, if you like. Um, and so my hypothesis is that this would be the region in which we in fact have um, the talons making most of their um, marks and impressions and wounds on Kathleen's head. Um, but there's one part of this in particular that I'd like to take a closer look at because it's very interesting and it's directly under more or less where Kathleen's head um, was lying. So just a trigger warning here because we are going to see um, Kathleen's dead body just in order to see where the head was approximately lying. We know that Michael moved it to put a um, sweatshirt or something underneath it to prop her head up uh, on finding the body. So if you don't want to see a dead body and a lot of blood, you might want to switch off now. Right, so this is another composite photo that I've put together. And as you can see, where Kathleen's head is lying is in the corner um, at the edge of the um, uh, door frame. And um, yes, yeah, somewhere sort of uh, outside the edge of the door frame and the first step. So if we head back, this I think is more or less the region that we're finding her head lying in. Now, so we've zoomed in again, uh, which is a bit unhelpful for the resolution. Um, but I do want to draw attention to this shape here, which I actually think is very, very interesting indeed. Um, you might think that I'm seeing things, uh, but I think that we have an impression here that deserves further examination. Um, what we seem to have, in my opinion, is we have um, the wound of Kathleen, the back of her head, poking out here, terminating somewhere around here. And then we have something, once again, some kind of shadow blocking that impression of the blood. And it seems to run in more or less an H shape, like so. Now, this H shape would be more or less what you'd expect from one of the elves' talons in Kathleen's head. And it would make sense that if this is in fact one of the wounds, and it does seem to correspond to one of the longer wounds in uh, the back of Kathleen's head in the autopsy photos, that we still uh, have the impression of an elf's talon as it's dug in to the back of Kathleen's head. Um, if we look again at uh, the entire area running along here at the back of the skirting board, door frame rather, um, I think we can actually see many impressions along here that could in principle correspond to the owl's talons. I think this is the most talon impression. But I think that we not only have the impression here that has um, an impression of Kathleen's wound with the talons in it, or with a talon in it, but I think also we have um, the impression of Owl's uh, foot, or rather um, leg, terminating with a blood spatter there. I think we also uh, have more markings here, and more interestingly, I think we have the impressions here of a shadow of two uh, owl's legs, which again terminate in long trails of darker blood spatter up here. So I think this is all very interesting, and what we're shown is that if this is the wing, and the back of the owl is along here, head up in this region here, we might see the shadow of the head uh, coming up here more clearly, since this area is again without blood. Um, but returning to this area, here, we see that where we find the talon marks is, in fact, where we would expect if this were, in fact, the wing of the owl coming out here, and if this, oh, 
and if this were the body coming out here. So we would see this is where the talon impression and the wound impression is. And we have the other impressions uh, along the back running at what would be the line of motion of the bird's legs as it kicked off and on against Catherine's head. And just one final point on uh, the owl theory and some of the spatter that we have uh, against the floor and the bottom step here. Um, so you'll notice that not only is there blood spatter, but there seems to be the spatter of something white. I've never heard anywhere any explanation of what this is. Um, I've never seen it mentioned in any report. I've never seen it uh, described by anyone interviewed. And at first I thought, well, this must just be paint that was left over from painting the white skirting boards. After all, you can kind of see it along here, close to the skirting board. Um, the trouble is, though, that we can clearly see that this white spatter here is on top of the blood spatter. So it had to have come afterwards. Now, that means that we have some white um, spatter marks here that weren't a part of the uh, impressions or the spatter on the steps before Kathleen's accident. A lot of it, as you can see, is smeared in along here, and in fact more so along here. When you go higher up onto the second step, you also see uh, more of this white spatter uh, smeared in. And the only thing that I can speculate is that this is in fact guano, or owl poop, if you like, rather than guano. But I think that, um, again, this is another anomaly in the uh, crime scene photos that requires an explanation, and it's um, an impression that I've never heard explained elsewhere. So if you do have an explanation for this that is in line with either the theory that Kathleen fell down the stairs or that Kathleen uh, was murdered by Michael, I'd really like to hear. For my own part, I can only say that this seems extremely compatible with um, a bird being in the house after Kathleen's death. Thanks for watching.